Hello everybody. I am Shama Srikumar, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Gadigli School of Engineering and Technology. So now we will start with the first lecture of the Applied Electromagnetic Theory subject and it deals with the prerequisite which is the vector calculus. So in this lecture we will cover the basics of scalar and vector, terms related to vectors like unit vector, position vector, distance vector, vector multiplication that is dot product and cross product and the different coordinate systems. So you already know the difference between the scalar and a vector quantity. So the scalar quantity is something which has only a magnitude. And vector quantity is something which has both magnitude as well as direction. So if you consider time, temperature, etc., it is having only a value. It's time you'll tell like one second, two second, etc. It doesn't have any direction. But if you consider velocity or force, etc., it will have a direction to completely specify the quantity. So something which is having both magnitude as well as direction, it is called as a vector quantity. Now, what is a scalar field and a vector field? The field is something which is defined over a certain region in space. So if a scalar quantity is described in a certain region of space, it is called as a scalar field. Here we are just showing the temperature in different parts of the world. Since temperature is a scalar quantity, this will give us the scalar field. That is, it's showing the temperature distribution in a particular region. But if you are defining a vector quantity over a certain region of space, then we will get what is called as the vector field. This figure shows us the meteorological observations of the wind direction in different parts of the world. Since the velocity of the wind is a vector quantity, it will have the directions as well. So in this figure, it is showing a vector field. So that is the difference between a scalar field and a vector field. Now we'll discuss some of the terms related to vectors. One of the terms related to vectors is the unit vector. So unit vector is a vector with unit magnitude and it is in a direction of the vector. So if you consider a vector A, the unit vector along A is given by A A cap and it is determined by the equation vector divided by the magnitude of the vector A. The magnitude of the vector A is same as the length of the vector A. In the conventional practice of electromagnetic theory, we will take the unit vectors as AX cap, AY cap and AZ cap as the vectors, unit vectors along X, Y and Z direction. These vectors will have a magnitude of 1 and they are three, along the three mutually perpendicular axes in a three-dimensional plane. So if you consider the example to find the unit vector along the vector A, which is 14 AX cap minus 2 AY cap plus 6 AZ cap, we will divide this vector divided by the magnitude, which is root of 14 square plus minus 2 the whole square plus 6 square. So we will get it as 0.911 AX cap minus 0.13 AY cap plus 0.39 AZ cap. And if you find the magnitude of this vector, you will get it as 1. The next term related to vectors is the position vector. Any point P in space denoted by the coordinates x, y, z can be explained using the position vector. So it is a vector which is directed from the origin to the point P. And it is given by x, a, x cap plus y, a, y cap plus z, a, z cap. Here a, x cap, a, y cap and a, z cap denotes the unit vectors along x, y and z direction. And x, y, z denotes the coordinates along x, y, and z direction. So if you consider that example, that is we are having the point 3, 4, 5 in Cartesian coordinate system, then the position vector of that point is given by 3ax cap plus 4ay cap plus 5az cap. And if we want to plot this point in space, we can get the, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis. So we'll find a point at x equal to 3, y equal to 4. So this, the point of intersection of these two points will give us the coordinate 3, 4. That is a point in two-dimensional space. Now we'll project this point 5 units in the positive z-direction. Hence, we'll get the point B, 
which is given by the coordinates 3, 4, 5. This is the point P and if you join this point P to the origin, we will get what is called as the position vector RP and it is given by 3AX cap plus 4AY cap plus 5AZ cap. Now the next term is the distance vector or the displacement vector. That is if you have got two points in space, the vector directed from one point to the other point is called as the distance vector. So if you have having two points P and Q and if you join the points P, Q, this vector is called as the distance vector between point P and Q. It is same as the difference between the position vector of point Q and position vector of point P. So if you subtract the x coordinates of P and Q, you will get the value along x direction. If you subtract the y coordinates between P and Q, you will get the along the y direction. And the z coordinate between P and Q will get the value in z direction. So, if you consider an example, we are having two points P and Q, which is given by these coordinates. If you want, first question is to calculate the position vector of point P. So the position vector of point P, we can convert these coordinates directly into vector. So, it is having zero units along x direction. Along y direction, we are having two units. So, it is 2AY cap. Along z direction, we are having four units. So, it is 4AZ cap. Now, what is the distance vector between point P and Q? So, you should subtract the coordinates of P from the coordinates of Q. So, if you subtract the coordinates, minus 3 minus 0, it is minus 3 along the x direction. 1 minus 2, it is minus 1 along the y direction. 5 minus 4, it is 1 along the z direction. So, this gives us the distance vector between the points P and Q. Now, to find the distance between P and Q, either you can use the distance formula or you can find the magnitude of the distance vector. So, if you find the magnitude of the distance vector, it is root of minus 3 square plus minus 1 the square plus 1 square, which is equal to 3.317. Or you can use the distance equation where you will subtract the x coordinates, the whole square, y coordinates of difference, the whole square, plus z coordinates difference, the whole square. So this is how we can find the distance vector and the distance between any two points in space. Now when you consider two vectors, it can be multiplied either in a scalar product or as a vector product. The scalar product or the dot product is denoted by A dot B. So this dot product is mainly used to find the projection of a vector on a particular vector. And this A dot B is given by the product of the magnitude of the vectors and the cosine of the angle between the two vectors A and B. So we will take the cosine of the smaller angle between A and B. So if we are having two vectors A and B, which is given by the coordinates AX, AY, AZ and BX, BY, BZ, if you take A dot B, it is AX, BX plus AY, BY plus AZ, BZ. Now you can make an observation that if the two vectors A and B are orthogonal or perpendicular, the angle between them will be equal to 90 degrees. So if you substitute here, you will get it as cos 90. You can know that cos 90 is 0. So the dot product will be 0 if two vectors are perpendicular to one another. Also, when you consider dot products, there it is commutative that is a dot b will be equal to b dot a. Also, it is a distributive that is a dot b plus c will be equal to a dot b plus a dot c. Now, when you consider the unit vectors, it is having a magnitude of 1. So, if you take the unit vectors ax cap, ay cap and az cap and we are taking the dot product between two different unit vectors that is ax cap dot ay cap. So, if you obtain the angle between x and y, it is equal to 90 degrees. Also, the magnitude of ax cap is 1, magnitude of ay cap is 1. Since the angle is 90 degrees, you will get the cos 90 is 0. So, the dot product between any two unit vectors of opposite side, that is, uh, we will take two different unit vectors, then it will be equal to 0. Now, if you consider the same unit vector, we are taking ax cap dot ax cap. Then if you are taking the dot product between two same vectors, it is having a theta angle of 0 degree. 
So cos zero is one. So the dot product between two same unit vectors it is equal to one. So these are some of the properties related to dot product. Now the next one is the cross product or the vector product. That is when you take a dot b, we are getting only a magnitude, so it's a scalar quantity. Now when you take the vector product, we'll have a direction as well. So when you consider a cross b, it is the product of the magnitudes of vector a and b, and it is the sign of the angle between a and b, and it will have a direction which is a unit normal perpendicular to the both the vectors a and b. So if you consider the two vectors a and b, the magnitude of vector a and b, if you take the product, is actually the area of this parallelogram. And it is actually in the direction of the vector which is normal to both the vectors a and b. That is denoted by a and k. In our practice, we take this a cross b as the cross product and is determined by the determinant of the two vectors. That is, in the first row, we will have the directions ax cap, ay cap, az cap. And in the first row, we will have the magnitude cell of x, y, and z direction corresponding to vector a. And in the second, third row, we will have the magnitudes corresponding to the vector b. Now we will find the determinant, then we will get the answer corresponding to A cross B. So when you observe the answer, it is also a vector, so it is called as a vector product. And one more observation related to the vector product or cross product is that, if you take the cross product between two mutually perpendicular axes, that is if you are taking the cross product between two same vectors, it is equal to zero, which since the angle is zero. But if you are taking the cross product between two mutually perpendicular axes like AX cap cross AY cap, it will be equal to AZ cap because AX and AY the angle is 90 degrees. So these two the axis which is perpendicular to X and Y is denoted by Z. So AX cap cross AY cap will be equal to AZ cap. Similarly, AY cap cross AZ cap, it will be equal to AX cap because the axis which is perpendicular to Y and Z is the X axis. Similarly, AZ cap cross AX cap will be equal to AY cap. Now, if you take the cross product in the reverse direction, that is we are taking AY cap cross AX cap, then the answer will be minus AZ cap because we are moving from the Y axis to the X axis. So it will be equal to minus 90. So the answer will be equal to minus AZ cap. So if we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction, we are making it as a cyclic permutation format. If you are moving in the anti-clockwise direction, the results will be always negative. Here we will see a simple example in finding the dot product and cross product. So you are having two vectors A and B. So when you find a dot product, we'll multiply the corresponding unit vectors magnitude. So here it is a long x cap, it is 3. Here a long x cap is 0, so we'll get it as 0. 4 into 2, it is 8. Plus 1 into minus 5, we'll get it as minus 5. So a dot b is equal to 3. Now when you find a cross b, you'll find the determinant. Along the first row, we are having the three unit vectors ax cap, ay cap, az cap. Then we will write the first vector's magnitude. That is 3, 4, 1. And along the next row, we will have 0, 2, minus 5. Then we will find the value of the determinant. So it is AX cap into minus 20 minus 2, minus AY cap into minus 15 minus 0, plus AZ cap into 6 minus 0. Hence, we will get A cross B as minus 22 AX cap plus 15 AY cap plus 6 AZ cap. So when you compare the answers for dot product and cross product, here we are having a scalar value and here we will get a vector quantity. Now we will discuss about the coordinate systems. So the main coordinate system which we have heard about is the Cartesian coordinate system or the rectangular coordinate system, which is represented by the coordinates x, y and z. So if you are taking rectangular sheets, it is easy for us to represent the points in rectangular coordinate system. But if you are taking some structures like wires, spherical bodies, etc., it will be difficult for us to tell the points along the cylinder or a sphere in terms of x, y, z. So we define two more coordinate systems. One is a cylindrical coordinate system and one is a spherical coordinate system.
So if we are having structures like wires or cables, they are cylindrical in shape. So we will determine the points along the wires or cables using the cylindrical coordinate systems. And if we are having some objects which are spherical in shape, we will explain the points along the sphere using the spherical coordinate system. So we need to discuss about the three coordinate systems. Now, first we will see the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system. So in rectangular coordinate system, any point P in the space can be represented using the coordinates X, Y, Z. So we are having a three axes X, Y, Z, which are mutually perpendicular axes. So if you want to mark a particular point, say 3, 2, 3, 5 in this Cartesian coordinate system, what we'll do is that along the X axis, we'll take two units. Along the Y axis, we'll take three units. And we'll find a point of intersection between the lines X equal to 2 and Y equal to 3. So we'll get a particular point in the X, Y plane. Now we move five units in the positive Z direction from this point. So we move five units along the positive Z direction. Then we'll get the point P which is given by the coordinates 2, 3, 5. So if you try to complete the figure, it forms a vertex of a rectangular cuboid. That is why this coordinate system is called as the rectangular coordinate system. So if you are having rectangular sheet, we can determine the points using the rectangular coordinate system. So in general, in Cartesian coordinate system, a point P is a vertex of a cubical structure and it has a three coordinates X, Y and Z. Now, if you find the range of X, Y and Z, it can vary anywhere between minus infinity and infinity. So X, Y and Z, all the three parameters can have any value from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, if you are considering a point as a vector, we are finding the position vector corresponding to this point, then we will join this to the origin and we can write it as AX, AX cap plus AY, AY cap plus AZ, AZ cap, where AX cap, AY cap and AZ cap represents the unit vectors along X, Y and Z. And where AX, AY, AZ represents the magnitudes along X, Y and Z, direction. Now, when you consider the magnitude of this vector A, it is the root of sum of squares of the each magnitude. So it is AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. Now, we have already seen that if you take the dot product between two same unit vectors, we will get it as 1. And if you take the dot product between two different unit vectors, it will be equal to 0. Similarly, if you take the cross product ax cross ax cap cross ay cap it will be equal to az cap ay cap cross az cap will be equal to az ax cap az cap cross ax cap will be equal to ay cap so these are some of the properties related to the cartesian coordinate system so if you consider the cartesian coordinate system we will have three infinite planes given by x equal to constant, y equal to constant, and z equal to constant. If you consider the x equal to constant plane, it will be a plane parallel to the yz plane. And the value of x will be constant, but y and z will be made to range of the entire values. Similarly, y equal to constant will be a plane which is parallel to the xz plane. And here, x and z will be made to range of the entire values. So if two constant planes are made to intersect, we will get what is called as a line. So here the x equal to constant plane and y equal to constant plane intersect. So it forms the line QR. And this line is parallel to the z axis. So if two planes intersect, we will get a line in three-dimensional plane. Now, if I made to intersect all the three planes, we will get a point P. So, the point P is made, that is this QR line, it is made to intersect with Z equal to constant plane. Then, we will get what is called as the point P. 
Thus, any point in partition coordinate system is the point of intersection of the three infinite planes along the x, y, and z direction. Next coordinate system we need to discuss is the cylindrical coordinate system. The cylindrical coordinate system is denoted by three parameters rho, phi, and z. So it is used to plot the points along a wire or a cable with a cylindrical end. So this rho actually determines the radius of the cylinder. So when we consider a constant value of rho, it means that it is a cylinder of constant radius. We don't have to bother about the height, etc. It will represent a cylinder of a fixed radius. So when you consider the radius of the cylinder, the range of values for the radius can, it can vary from zero to infinity. That is, radius will be only positive value, so it can vary from zero to infinity. Now we are taking the next parameter, which is denoted by phi. Phi actually represents the angle which a plane makes with the x-axis in the xy plane. That is, we consider a plane the angle which it is made at with the x-axis is denoted as phi. So phi equal to constant is denoted by this plane. So when you consider this angle, if you consider the total angle, it will be equal to 360 degree. So this angle phi can have a minimum value of 0 and it can have a maximum value of 360 degree or 2 pi. So that is denoted by the angle phi. And the parameter z, it is also a plane which is at a constant value of z. So it is a plane which is parallel to the x, y plane and it is at a constant value of z. So when you consider the range of values of z, it can be either positive or negative. So it will be anywhere between minus infinity and infinity. So here we have considered the three constant planes for the cylindrical coordinate system. Now, if you make the three planes in the set, we will get what is called as the point P in cylindrical coordinate system. So this is the cylinder of constant radius rho. This is the plane with a constant value of phi. And this is a plane with constant value of z. The point of intersection will be a point along this that is denoted by point P and it is the point along the cylinder. So this is called as a cylindrical coordinate system and it has got three coordinates rho, phi and z where rho is the radius of the cylinder, phi is the angle made by the plane with the positive x-axis and z is the plane which is parallel to the x-y plane. And it denotes the height of the point from the xy plane. That is, if you represent this point from xy plane, what is the height? That is represented by the value of z. Thus, a point P in cylindrical coordinate system has three coordinates rho, phi, and z, where rho is the radius of cylinder passing through the point P. And it is measured from the z axis. And 5 is the angle made by the plane with respect to the x-axis in the xy plane. And z is same as the z in Cartesian coordinate system and it denotes the height of the cylinder. The range we have already discussed, the rho varies from 0 to infinity, phi varies from 0 to 2 pi and z varies from minus infinity to plus infinity. Similar to Cartesian coordinate system, we are taking three unit vectors along the three axes of rho, phi, and z. And it is denoted by a rho cap, a phi cap, and a z cap. So if you consider a vector in cylindrical coordinate system, it can be represented as a rho, a rho cap, plus a phi, a phi cap, plus a z, a z cap. Now, when you consider this figure, here we are having the point P. The radius of the cylinder is denoted by rho. So the direction in which the rho varies, it is from the z axis in the outward direction. So the unit vector a rho cap is directed radially outward. Now when you consider the angle phi, we are measuring from the x axis in the anti-clockwise direction. 
So this angle 5 is varying from the x-axis in this direction. So the unit vector A5 cap is along the curved surface of the cylinder. And our positive z-axis is this. So AZ cap is the axis which is parallel to the z-axis from the point E. Thus, we get the vector in cylindrical coordinate system. So, we have the three unit vectors, A rho cap, A phi cap, and A z cap. And when you consider the magnitude of vector in cylindrical coordinate system, it is root of A rho square plus A phi square plus A z square. Now, we will see what is the relation between the Cartesian coordinate system and cylindrical coordinate system. So, if you consider a point E, which is having the coordinates x, y, and z in Cartesian coordinate system. It is having the coordinates rho 5z in cylindrical coordinate system. The z in Cartesian and cylindrical remains the same. So what we are doing is that we are moving z units and taking its projection on the x, y plane. So we move z units and we got the point on the x, y plane. Now the radius of this cylinder is denoted by rho. So it is measured from the z axis. So we will get the radius as rho. The angle made by this plane with the x axis x is denoted by phi. So here we have got a triangle. Now our aim is to find the components of the vector along x and y direction. So if we consider this row, this angle as phi, this is the adjacent side corresponding to the angle phi. So this value will be equal to rho cos phi. So the value of x is rho cos phi. Now when you consider this side, it is a side opposite to the angle phi. So it is equal to rho sin phi. And that is the value along the y axis. So y equal to rho sin phi. So we will get the value of x as rho cos phi, y as rho sin phi, and z the same as z in Cartesian coordinate system. This is how we convert the coordinates in cylindrical coordinate system into the coordinates in Cartesian system. Now, if we observe the equations, from this equation, if you want to find rho, that is, if you add the first two equations, we will get it as x square plus y square equal to rho square into cos square phi plus sine square phi. So, cos square phi plus sine square phi is 1. So from that equation, we will get rho as root of x square plus y square. Similarly, if you divide these two equations, we will get tan phi as y by x. So we will get phi as tan inverse y by x. Again, z is same as our original z. So this is same as taking the magnitude and the angle of, a, that is of an imaginary parameter. So if you take r e raised to j phi, here r represents root of x square plus y square and the angle is denoted by tan inverse y by x. So when you consider a Cartesian coordinates, if you are given with the Cartesian coordinates, we can find the cylindrical coordinates using this equation. So this is how we can relate a point in cylindrical coordinate system with our coordinates in Cartesian coordinate system. Now we have already told that we are having the three unit vectors along the rho axis, phi axis and z axis. If you take the dot product between the unit vectors in the same direction, we will get it as 1. If you take the dot product between two different unit vectors, you will get it as 0 since they are mutually perpendicular to each other. Similar to the Cartesian coordinate systems, a rho cap cross A phi cap will be the third mutually perpendicular axis, which is A z cap. A phi cap cross A z cap will be A rho cap, etc. That is, it will follow the cyclic permutation in cross product.
The next coordinate system we need to discuss is the spherical coordinate system. In this, the point is determined by the coordinates r, eta, phi. So the point of intersection of three constant planes forms the point P. So the first one is the r equal to constant plane. So the r equal to constant plane represents a sphere with the center at the origin. And the radius is measured from the origin. So it will represent the sphere of constant radius. When you consider the radius, it will be always positive. So the range of the value of radius will be from zero to infinity. Now the second parameter is theta. So theta equal to re constant represents a half conical structure above the z axis. So if you consider the range of theta, this is an angle theta corresponding to theta here it is given as C. This angle is measured from the z-axis. So it can vary from 0 to pi by 2 in along the positive z-axis. And the, again, if it is greater than pi by 2, it will be measured along the negative z-axis. So the total variation of theta is from 0 to pi and it represents the half conical angle. Now, the point, the third coordinate is phi. Phi equal to constant again represents the half plane where the angle is measured from the positive x axis. It is similar to the phi in cylindrical coordinate system. The range of phi is from zero to two phi. Now the point of intersection of the r equal to constant, theta equal to constant, and phi equal to constant forms of a point P in spherical coordinate system. So thus in spherical coordinate system, we have got the radius and two angular measurements, one is for theta and one is for phi. Thus we get the point P along a spherical structure. Thus, in spherical coordinate system, we are having the point P, which is having the three coordinates R, theta, and phi. It can be mapped to the point in Cartesian coordinate system. So, where R is the radius, which is measured from the origin, phi is the angle of the plane measured from the positive x-axis, similar to that in cylindrical coordinate system, and theta is the angle between the z-axis and the position vector of so the range of value of r is from 0 to infinity. We have already seen the radius varies from 0 to infinity. The angle theta varies from 0 to 180 degree and phi varies from 0 to 2 pi. So if you take the point P, we can have the three unit vectors along the r axis, theta and phi axis. And it is denoted by a r cap, a theta cap and a phi cap. Here, AR cap is measured in the radial direction. That is, the radius is measured from the origin. So, it will be radially outward. So, AR cap is from the away from the point P. Now, theta is measured from the positive z axis. So, the unit vector A theta cap will be in this direction. And A phi cap is measured in the anti clockwise direction. So it's varying this direction. So the third mutually perpendicular axis is A phi cap. So the vector in spherical coordinate system is given by AR, AR cap plus A theta, A theta cap plus A phi, A phi cap. And the three units vectors are AR cap, A theta cap, A phi cap. And thus, the magnitude of vector A is root of A r squared plus root A theta squared plus A phi squared. So now we will see the relation between spherical coordinate system and Cartesian coordinate system. So here we are having a point P, which is x, y, z in Cartesian, r theta phi in spherical and rho phi z in cylindrical. So, if you consider the point P, the radius R is measured from the origin. And theta is the angle made by this line from the positive Z axis. When you consider the value Z, we are projecting that Z height onto the XY plane. And if you join this point to the origin, we get the radius rho, which is the radius of the cylinder. 
Now the components of this line along the x and y axis is given by rho cos phi and rho sin phi as we have already seen in cylindrical coordinate system. Now this rho the same as the rho which is obtained by joining the point E to the z axis. Now when you consider this angle theta, this is the side opposite to the angle theta, so that is equal to r sine theta, and this is the side adjacent to the angle theta, so this is r cos theta. So the value of rho is r sine theta. So when you substitute here, we will get x as r sine theta cos phi. Now when you substitute rho here, we will get y as r sine theta sine phi. Similarly, the z value is the value along this vertical component which is equal to r cos theta. So z equal to r cos theta. So that is the relation between the spherical coordinate system and the Cartesian coordinate system. Now to convert the Cartesian back into spherical, we will take the sum of squares of x, y and z. So square plus y square will give us r square sine square theta. And now adding with z square, we'll get it as r square cos square theta. So you'll get it as r square. So r is root of x square plus y square plus z square. It gives us the equation of the sphere of radius r, which is centered at the origin. Now, when you consider the angle phi, you divide the equation y by x, you'll get tan phi as y by x. So phi will be equal to tan inverse y by x. That is same as the phi in cylindrical coordinate system. And to get theta, first we'll find tan theta. To get tan theta, we are finding x square plus y square, which is equal to r square sine square theta. If you take the square root, root of x square plus y square is r sine theta. On dividing it with z, we'll get tan theta. Theta is tan inverse root of x square plus y square by z. So that gives us the relation between spherical and Cartesian coordinate system. Now the three mutually perpendicular unit vectors are AR cap, A theta cap and A phi cap. If you take the relation between two same unit vectors, we will get it as 1. When the unit vectors are different, we will get it as 0. And if you take the cross product, AR cap cross A theta cap will be equal to A phi cap. A theta cap cross A phi cap will be equal to AR cap, etc. Similar, that is, it follows cyclic permutation. Thus, we have established the relation between the three coordinate system, that is, Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinate system. So now we will consider an example where we have the Cartesian coordinates as minus two. 6, 3. Our aim is to convert it into cylindrical and spherical coordinate system. So, the, find the cylindrical coordinate system. Rho is obtained as root of x square plus y square. So, on finding root of, you'll get minus 2 square plus 6 square, which is equal to 6.32. Phi is tan inverse y by x. So, on finding y by x is 6 by minus 2. So actually, this is a point which is in the second quadrant if we consider the xy plane. So tan inverse of minus 3 is same as 180 minus tan inverse of 3. So you will get it as 108.43 degree. And the z coordinate is same as the z coordinate in Cartesian which is equal to 3. Now to find the spherical coordinate system, the value of r is root of x square plus y square plus z square. On finding that, you will get the value as 7. And theta is tan inverse root of x square plus y square by z. On finding this value, we will get it as 64.62 degree. As you can observe, this is an angle between 0 degree and 180 degree. Now phi is tan inverse y by x, which is same as the phi in cylindrical coordinate system. It is equal to 108.43 degree. Thus, we have got the point P in cylindrical coordinate system, which is 6.3 to 108.43 and 3. And in spherical coordinate system, it is 7, 64.62 degree, 108.43 degrees. Thus, we have expressed the point P in all the coordinate system. So, we will conclude this lecture on vector calculus. 
in this lecture we discussed about the different terms related to vectors different coordinate systems like cartesian cylindrical and spherical coordinate system thank you